Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now we're glad to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. We do have a few visitors. We're glad to have you. And to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping today we can be an inspiration to many, many dear people out in the radio listening audience as well as these here in the auditorium. And you in the radio listening audience, if you get on your phone, call a friend, especially shut in, have them to tune in and get to Northside Baptist Church Hour. You'll be doing them a favor and doing us a favor as well. We appreciate it so very much. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn, would you please, the Gospel of John chapter 6. Some three weeks ago, I spoke on the subject, where is the beef? Then the next Sunday, I spoke on the subject, where is the salt? Last Sunday, my message was, where's the oil? So today, I'm going to speak on this subject, where is the bread? I suppose that bread is the most common food we have today. The whole world depends upon bread for livelihood. And the Bible has much to say about bread. And we want to find out where the bread is today. Now maybe some of you children, you'd rather have just some plain cookies. I'm reminded of the little boy that couldn't stay out of the cookie jar. And his mother warned him, said, son, if you get back in the cookie jar anymore I'm going to give you a whipping so she came in the kitchen and caught him with one in his mouth he stand up on the chair near the cookie jar and she said son didn't I tell you not to get back in that cookie jar anymore he said yes ma'am ma mom I said really what I was doing I was just kind of smelling of him what I'm got caught on my teeth and so I guess maybe there's always a way to put up put a good excuse for what we do and then our tape for today will be tape number 130. 130 is the tape number for today. Where is the bread? So I'm reading today from John chapter 6. If you'd like to have some of these tapes, they're available for $3 each. The money is used to pay for radio time. We have to pay our radio bill. We pay it every Monday morning. We refuse to go in debt to the radio station. We've been on the air now in our 36th year of daily broadcasting. And I made it a policy from the very beginning of the first week of broadcasting that we'd, we would never go in debt to the radio station. We had to borrow money otherwise or take our own money that we get to live on to pay the bill. We do not go in debt to the radio station. We pay our bill every Monday morning. And you that help take care of this radio expense make it possible for multitudes to get the gospel out in the radio listening audience. And we have these tape available. You can request them. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603, is the zip code number. And if you're not getting the daily broadcast, if you tune to the station where you're now listening, each day, Monday through Saturday at 12 o'clock noon, you can get the daily broadcast. I was over near Hartwell yesterday afternoon and went into an office there about a little matter. And I told the lady who I was, and she said, Well, Preach Edwards, I hear you on the radio every day. And the radio program goes into that area, of course, just like local. It's a powerful station. It reaches out many, many miles. Preacher called me from up in uh, South Carolina, near the North Carolina line last week. He said, Preacher Edwards, our people hear you up here every day, and we appreciate that very much. Now, John chapter 6, beginning with verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Now raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they should be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Let me pause and say just a word about that verse of Scripture. 
If you don't have that verse in mind, you ought to underscore it. Take a good look at it. Great outstanding Bible teacher made this statement some time ago. He said in the early years of his Christian sojourn, he doubted his salvation. He doubted whether or not he was saved. And said the Spirit of God led him to that one verse. John chapter 6 and verse 47. Where it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He said that said it. So I believed on Jesus. I received Christ by faith into my heart. That settled it. And verse 48, I am that bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh which I have given for the life of the world. Now that's as far as I'm reading today. I'll be giving you many other verses in my message. But talking about the bread of life. Now we like to eat. Now you can look at the average American and tell that. We have food to spare. We have plenty of food in America. While yet in many foreign countries people are literally starving to death every day. America is a fat land. And it's a land of plenty. Someone said some people eat to live and some people live to eat. I guess maybe that's about right. Uh, we maybe have some people that eat like a chicken, maybe a peck at a time. And then we have some light eaters that start eating when daylight comes, eat till dark. Then you also have the seafood eaters, they eat as long as they see the food. And that's one reason, I guess, maybe we grow east and west when we become adults rather than north and south. We all like to eat, and we eat in a land of plenty. We like bread, we like meat, we like just what we have to eat here in America, and God's been good to us, and we thank God for what we do have to eat, yet many of us overdo it. Now, where is the bread? I want to talk about the literal bread and the spiritual bread. Where is the bread? When you sit down at the table to eat, no doubt today, sometimes during the uh, Lunch hour, you're going to say, pass the bread, if you can't very well reach it. As a general rule, you'll have some bread on your table. You'll probably have other things and goodness on your table, but you'll have that bread there without a doubt. We are bread eaters. We like to eat bread, most of us. Now, where is the bread? Without the bread of life, you'll never live. Without the bread of life, you cannot live. Without the bread of life, you cannot go to heaven. And without bread on this earth, we'd soon perish away. Where was the bread back in the days of Jacob when his sons and his family were hungry and they'd eat up all their food and they had nothing left? They were almost coming to starvation and they had to have some bread. Where was the bread in those days? Well, God moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. And Joseph, a little lad of 17 years, Went out to check on his brethren one day and they didn't like him because he kindly. But the Bible tells us this was the hand of God. God was sending him on beforehand because God knew in the future there was coming a seven year drought in Egypt. And all over the land of Canaan there'd be no water. And for seven long years there'd be a drought. And God knew in order for people to survive, they would have to store up the food in advance, doing seven years of plenty. And so God sent this boy down into Egypt. It was rough on the little fellow to leave home. It was the hand of God. He said so late himself. And he went down into Egypt, became prime minister. And God revealed to him that there was coming seven years whenever the land would produce abundantly and give forth food in abundance. And then following that seven years of abundance, that'd be a seven-year drought. And God revealed to Joseph, if they wanted to survive, then to save up food during the first seven years for the seven years drought, and that's exactly what he did. During those seven years, Joseph ordered the people to store food away and get ready for a long seven-year drought. Now, this only happened in Egypt. This was the only place that they could store the food because they were the only ones that knew about it. Back in the land of Canaan, there was Joseph's father and his brethren, and they ran out of food. 
And the Bible said they heard that there was bread in Egypt. And then they set out to Egypt to buy bread. And you know the story. His brethren went down into Egypt. And then uh, they received bread and carried bread back to their father. And eventually Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. And sent them back for his father. And had his father brought down into the land of Egypt. Because God had already informed Abraham that his descendants would go into the land of Egypt and for some 400 years or better, they would live there in the land of Egypt. And this was step number one when Joseph was sent down into the land. All things worked together for the good of those that loved God and to fulfill the scriptures. Then later his father came, his brothers, brothers came, and there were 70 of them at all. And they came down to Egypt and they stayed there for some 400 years, like God said. In the meantime, Joseph fed his people. They found bread in Egypt. And after 400 years, then Moses, God raised him up to lead them back out toward the land of Canaan. You're familiar with that, I'm sure. Where's the bread for Jacob and his sons? It's down in Egypt in the bend there where Joseph is supervising the care of it. And they get bread. Number two, where was the bread when Israel needed it in the wilderness? You know, Moses went in then and led God's people out of the Egyptian bondage in which they were held by Pharaoh, led them across the Red Sea, led them into the wilderness, and the food ran out. And they began to murmur and complain and fuss on Moses. They said, back in the land of Egypt, we had onions and garlics and watermelons, and we had food back there, and now here we are in the wilderness. Our bread is run out, and we're about to starve to death. Where is the bread? What are we going to do for food, they said to Moses. Moses being the pastor of those people there, many of them, more than a million people, that he was a pastor of that great host of people and they had no food to eat. And Moses knew that God had directed him to lead them out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, into the wilderness, toward the land of Canaan. Moses went before God and Moses said, Lord, we got to have some bread. We don't have any bread, Lord. The people are starved to death. They are murmuring, they are complaining. And they were threatening to stone Moses because he had led them out of Egypt and now they had no food to eat. God said, Moses, I'll take care of that. He said, every morning now when you get up, you're going to find some little wafers out there around your tents. When the dew vanishes, then the wafers will be there. And that will be bread from heaven, angel food, the manna. I'm going to send it down from heaven. And during the night, God would send down the biscuits from heaven. And whenever they wake up in the morning, the dew disappeared. They'd go out and there were those wafers out there, little small uh, round uh, things uh, that taste like uh, honey and uh, bread. And there they would take them up. And God said, Moses, every day, six days a week, you go out and gather up that bread and you'll have food to eat. All the vitamins that they needed they found in that little wafer. In addition to that, God sent them some meat, of course. He sent them some quail from the sea. And those quail would come flying in from the sea and light around those camps. And they'd go out and catch them and kill them and eat them. And they had quail and wafers. And for 40 long years, they ate those wafers. Had all the vitamins in there they needed. They stayed in good health. They enjoyed the bread God gave them from heaven. And they gathered that up like God said, every day for six days you gather up the bread on the Sabbath, the day before the Sabbath. Go out and gather up enough to do you on the Sabbath. Don't be any bread out there on the Sabbath. And gather it up and you'll have bread for the Sabbath. But he said, now you eat that bread every day. If you don't, the next day it'll be stale. You eat it because the next morning I'll have you some fresh bread. That's a picture of God supplying our need day by day. As your day is, so shall your strength be, says the word of God. You don't have to worry about strength for tomorrow. God will give you strength on tomorrow for tomorrow. You worry about strength for today. That's the way God wants it. Where was the bread in the wilderness? God said, never mind. I'll send it down from heaven. He sent down angel food and fed that great multitude in the wilderness. Number three... Why was the bread back in the days when Naomi and her husband and two sons were down there in Moab? 
Now we find in the word of God in the book of Ruth that Elimelech, Naomi, and their two sons, Marlon and Kilion, left the land of Bethlehem, the little city of Bethlehem, very beautiful little city just on the outside of Jerusalem. And there was a famine in the land. And God said to those people, during the time of famine, if you'll obey me and do what I tell you, I'll see that you have food to eat. And many of them disobeyed God and they, uh, there became a famine in the land. Instead of Ruth and her husband and the two boys remaining in Bethlehem and trusting God, they took off down to Moab many miles away. And when they landed in Moab, everything seemed to go wrong. It wasn't long until Ruth's husband died and she buried him. It wasn't long after that until those boys who were sickly boys, they both died and she buried them. Of course, in the meantime, they had married there in the land of Moab. But during this particular time, almost 10 years, down there in the land of Moab, she wondered about how everything was coming along back in Bethlehem. No doubt there was a scarcity of bread now in Moab, evidently. And some traveler coming through there, evidently, said to them, said, Did you know there's a lot of bread back in Bethlehem now? God has blessed the people. God has sent the rain, no more drought. Everybody has plenty of food and plenty of bread back in Bethlehem. The Bible says in Ruth chapter 1 and verse 6, and she arose her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Naomi, where's the bread? She said, I heard about it. It's back in Bethlehem. And she said to her daughters-in-law, she said, now I'm going back home. I'm going back to Bethlehem. There's bread back there. No doubt during the ten years under the chastened rod of God when she lost her husband, Bare to two sons, she was miserable down there in Moab. She had left God's place. God's place was abode for her and had gone down into the land of Moab. But now she said, I heard that's bread back in Bethlehem. Naomi, where's the bread? It's back in Bethlehem, she said. I heard about it and I'm going home. You know the story if you read the book of Ruth, how she went back and there Ruth went along with her. And Ophir did not go back. She remained in the land among the heathen gods and her people. But Ruth, she chose a Naomi's God. And she went back then to the beautiful little place of Bethlehem. And there they had plenty of bread when they got back home where they should have been all along. But they ran away from it. Now when things get rough, there's a tendency to run away from certain things and places where God has placed you. Wherever God has placed you, you ought to stay put if you're in the will of God because if you run away from it, you're going to miss out on the bread. God will see that you get the bread if you stay put and obey the Lord. Say, so Naomi goes back to Bethlehem and see her coming in with Ruth. And it's a wonderful and beautiful story there in the book of Ruth about what happened. We won't have time to go into that. That'll be a half a dozen sermons within itself if we tried to preach on the book of Ruth. Where's the bread, Naomi? Back in Bethlehem, the place where they had left whenever they disobeyed God. Then we move on to thought number four. Where could Elijah get bread when God ordered him to go sit down by a little brook? Now God said, Elijah, I want you to get on the move because you have pronounced that there's going to be a drought in the land. You've already said to old man King Ahab, you stuck your finger under his nose, and you said, King Ahab, it's not going to rain until I say so. Now you better get on the move, preacher. You better get hit over by the brook because old man Ahab, no lady Jezebel, is going to be after your hide. Now you can't go and preach to people like that, Elijah, without them trying to get revenge. And you better move on and go to the brook Keith and sit down by that brook. Old Elijah the Tishbite, the man of God, the hairy man, went and sat down by that brook. There ran a little stream of water, sparkling water, coming right down that brook. Very cool. You must remember the drought was on now and water was very important in those days. And the man of God sat down by that brook and no doubt he said, Now, Lord, I'm sitting here by this brook, but where's the bread? I need some bread. I can't live off of water. Where am I going to get the bread? God said, Elijah, let me handle that. I'm going to pick out a couple of ravens and I'm going to send them in with you some bread every morning and every night and send you some good old sandwiches 
and you won't have to worry about a thing in the world. I don't know where he got him. He might have got him out of Ahab's cupboard as far as I know. But they got him anyway. In 1 Kings chapter 17 verses 5 and 6. The Bible said he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Kirith that is before Jordan. And the ravens. The Bible says the ravens brought him flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. Now here sat the old prophet of God. He wanted to know where was the bread. God said, son, never mind, you'll get the bread. And here came these ravens flying in, bringing him bread and, and meat, the Bible tells us. And he sat down and ate those good old sandwiches every morning and every night and drank out of that cool, sparkling brook of water that ran there in front of him. And he enjoyed it. But for a long period of time, no doubt, the old man of God sat there and he wondered, where in the world am I going to get the bread? God, where's the bread? God said, never mind, son. Won't be long. You're going to see two birds flying in here. They'll have you some good old sandwiches. You just take them and eat them. And then tonight, they'll come back and bring you some more. And then, son, in the morning, they'll bring you some more sandwiches. Tomorrow night, they'll bring you some more. You don't have to worry about the bread. I'll take care of that. And God sent those birds in and brought that bread to Elijah. Then we come to thought number five, and that is, where did the prodigal son find some bread? You must remember, I mentioned when I preached on where's the beef, he found the beef back in the father's house, but now he's down at the hog pen and begin to think about bread. He had some good old bread back home. He could enjoy the good old hoe cakes or cornbread or biscuits or whatever. He could enjoy them back there at home, but now he's down at the hog pen because he left home and he's eating the husk that the swine did eat. And he put on his thinking cap. He said, here I am down here at this old hog pen feeding these stinking swine and they were abomination to a Jew. And he said, now back in my father's house there's bread and enough to spare. All right, prodigal, where's the bread? He said, I know where it is. I know exactly where the bread is. The bread is back in my father's house. I left it back there when I left home. In order to get that, I'll have to go back. In Luke chapter 15, verses 17 and 18, the Bible said when he came to himself, he said, How many hide servants my father hath bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger, I will arise and go to my father. He said, There's plenty of bread in my father's house. Now I'm a fool to sit down here and eat the husk that the swine does eat. I'm going to get up and go back home. He arose and he went back home to the father's house. And there they had plenty of bread. And they enjoyed the bread and the fatted calf in the father's house. It's right there where he left it. Now there's a lot of Christians today. At one time they enjoyed the blessings of God. But this morning they're sitting at home backslidden on God. They're down at the hog pen as it were. Eating the husk of swine does eat. And they're not enjoying the blessings of God. They're not in God's house. Because they have left the place of worship left the house of God where God wanted them to be on the Lord's day, and they've gone down to the hog pen of time, trying to find pleasure and satisfaction out in the world. But they'll never find it there. They'll have to find it in the house of God. They'll have to find it back where they left it. They'll have to find it back in fellowship with God. So the prodigal son goes back home. I'm reminded of the man that helped win me to God. Humble man of God, he now abides over in Inman, South Carolina. He and his wife are very feeble, and he's, uh, he's disabled even to preach. He can't even preach anymore. But one of the most humble pastors I've ever known, wonderful man of God, he started out in the ministry back during the days of depression over in the city of Greenville, South Carolina. That was back in what we call the Hoover days, days of depression. Whenever you had so many patches on your shirt, you couldn't tell what color it was at the beginning. And there we... People uh, smoked old golden grain smoking tobacco and stuff like that and rode on hoover buggies and walked and uh, just, you just couldn't hardly get any money in those days. If you made 50 cents a day someplace, you did well. And this was during the days of depression and they didn't have anything to eat for breakfast in the morning but cornbread and syrup. Every morning they'd eat that cornbread that's preaching his wife and that cornbread and syrup, that's all they had for breakfast every morning, morning after morning. No flour, no money to buy any flour. And he said, you know, one day he got to hold some money. Either some of his members brought in a sack of flour so they could have some biscuits. 
He said, we couldn't hardly wait until the next morning to get some good old brown biscuits. It had been so long since we had them, but eat so much old cornbread that we couldn't hardly look at it. And he said, my wife got up and cooked a pan of beautiful brown biscuits and put them on a platter and set them on the table. They had living with them at that time, their little nephew. He was about six or seven years old. And he's, he'd be eating that cornbread every morning. He sat down at the table. And he said, uh, uh, he's passed the little fellow some biscuits. He shoved them back. He said, I don't want them things. I want some cornbread. He said he felt like taking him and putting him out in the yard. After all the mornings, had to eat that cornbread. And now he didn't want biscuits. He wanted some more cornbread. Well, I just suppose you can get used to eating certain things until you like that better. But you can always find biscuits in the father's house. The prodigal son did. Number six, how did the hungry multitude get bread in the days of Jesus? That little boy one morning said to his mama, no doubt, he said, Mama, the Lord is coming through here and there'll be a great crowd of people, but, and I want to go hear him. And she said, Son, I, I, I'll just fix you up a little lunch and let you do that. And she fixed the fellow up a little lunch and fixed him five little small biscuits, little wafer-like biscuits and two little fish and put them in a little lunch bag and said, Now, son, when you get hungry, you eat these five little biscuits and then eat these two little fish. You'll make it all right. He said, No doubt. Thank you, Mama. And he took off with that crowd. He heard Jesus teaching and preaching and saw that great multitude, thousands of people. And they kept following the Lord until it, it, got, it became time for them to eat and they were hungry. And nobody had anything to eat. Everybody was hungry. And uh, some of it had come so far until the disciples said if they started back Without any food, they would faint by the way and just pass out. They were so hungry. Then they started talking about food. And, and Jesus said to them, said, Any you fellows know anything about the bread around here? And Andrew said, Well, I'll tell you, Lord, there's nobody got any bread in this place. And he said, A certain amount of money wouldn't buy enough for this crowd. But he said, A little boy over there, I just happened to check over there something he had in his hand. And he said, He's got a little bag over there. And in that bag, I noticed he had five biscuits and two little fish. And uh, Jesus said, well, uh, that'll be all right. I'll take care of that. And he said, let me have them. And he went over there and said to the little boy, said, Jesus wants your biscuits, son, and you want your fish. Would you let him have Yes, sir. I'll let Jesus have anything I got. And he took the little boy's five biscuits and two little fish. And there was that great multitude, 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, great mob of people, and they were all hungry. And no doubt they said, where's the bread? Where's the bread? We're hungry. And they found that bread in that little basket that boy had there, five little biscuits. And Jesus took that bread and began to pass it out to the disciples. And they passed that bread out and just kept passing it out and passed it out. Took the two little fish and kept passing that out and fed that great multitude of people. They ate all the bread they could hold. They ate all the fish that they could contain. And then they had 12 basketfuls left over. And Jesus said, you apostles, you 12 apostles, get your basket of peace now and fill it up. We'll be moving on. You're going to need some bread later. And they found the bread in the hand of a little boy. And he gave it to Jesus. And little is much when God is in it. And there they took that bread and fed the multitude. They found the bread in the hand of a little boy. Yes, even little children can be used of God. Let's move on to another thought. Where was the bread one day when a man had some company to come in upon him and didn't have any bread for him? He is great disturbed. In Luke chapter 11, verses 5 and 6, the Bible tells us there this fellow saw company coming in. He said, now I've got company coming in, and I don't have any bread to put before him, and I'm greatly embarrassed. Then the thought came to him, now, wait a minute. i got a neighbor lives right up here on the hill. He's got some bread in his cupboard, I'm sure, and it was night, and... His neighbor had gone to bed, and he said, I'm going up there and get the bread I need. He said, let me see, I need one, two, I need three loaves. I'm going up there and tell my neighbor I want three loaves of bread. He went up knocked on the neighbor's door. The neighbor said, who's that? He said, I'm so-and-so down the hill here, your neighbor. He said, what do you want? He said, I want some bread. He said, I have company down at my house. I need three loaves of bread. His neighbor said to him, said, man, are you crazy? Waking me up at this time of night, I'm in the bed here with my children. Get away from here. I got no time to fool with you. And then did the man leave? No, sir. He whammed on the door again. Bang, bang, bang. Neighbor said, what do you want? He said, I want three loaves of bread. I want some bread. You got it. It's in the cupboard. I want it. 
The neighbor said, get away from here and let me alone. I'm in the bed with my children. But did he leave? No, sir. Bang, bang, bang. He knocked on the door again. You know what the neighbor said? The neighbor said he knows where the bread is. He knows I got bread here in my cupboard. And he's not going to leave till he gets what he come after. And that neighbor got up and went to his cupboard and took out not five loaves, not two loaves, not four loaves, but took out three loaves of bread. That's exactly what the man asked for. And he was not going to take no for an answer. And he got those three loaves and went back and fed his company. Now, Jesus said, when you pray, you tell him exactly what you want. Don't beat the devil around the bush and say, well, maybe about this and about that. Lord, if it be your will, now, we take this in consideration. Uh, something in that neighborhood I want you to do. No, no. Put a right down exactly what you want God to do. Tell him exactly what you want. And Jesus said, when you pray, that's the way you need to pray. Tell me exactly what you want. I used to know a preacher. Every time he announced his service on the radio, he would say, our service starts about so-and-so. Our service starts around so-and-so. I like for a service to start at a certain time, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 7 o'clock, not about that time, around that time. Now, he knew exactly what he wanted, and he got it. We come to the next thought, and that is the Bible tells us we need to find out where the bread is in time of fellowship. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 46, the Bible said they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with singleness and, and gladness of heart. Now, God's people, it's good for them to get together and break bread or eat together and talk in fellowship about the things of God. That's good for them to do that. Then number nine, Jesus is our spiritual bread, and we should always be thankful for him and our daily bread. The Bible says in John 6, 48, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 11, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse 26, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples. In John chapter 6 and verse 11, Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. Now God tells us you have to be thankful for the bread we have to eat. There'll be some of you people that go home today you sit down at the table and you gobble up your food and you won't one time bow your head and thank God for your food. The head of the house ought to always pray and thank God for the food or call on someone at the table to do so. You should never sit down and eat without thanking God for the food that you have to eat. You need to be thankful. Then finally, we shall someday sit down with our Lord and break bread at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 9 tells us so. As we feast up on the bread of life, we received him as our bread by faith, and we'll live forever. We feed upon him, which is the word of God, and eventually we'll sit down with him literally at the table, at the lamb's table there, at the, uh, the marriage supper of the lamb, and fellowship with him around the table. Someone asked me some time ago, Preach Edwards, is it in the Bible where God promises us bread and water? Is that a promise from God? That is a promise from God. In Isaiah chapter 33, verses 15 and 16, the Bible tells you there, if you'll do right and serve God and love God, God will guarantee you bread and water. He promises you bread and water in that scripture. And we thank God for the bread of life. We thank God for Jesus, our bread. We thank God that we can have him and feast upon him and feast upon the word day by day. If you don't know the bread, don't have the bread you ought to find out about the bread today. Thank you for listening well. Let's all stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the bread of life. Jesus is our bread. Thank you for that bread. The Word of God today is our bread. Thank you we can feed upon the Word and grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today as we give this invitation that you speak to all of our hearts. And speak to many people in the radio listed audience. And may Jesus be glorified. We pray in his name. Amen. Now as John plays a couple of stanzas for us this morning. If you're in this building and you want to join this church where you receive members you may come. If you want to come down here rededicate your life or come back to God. If you want to get saved. Or for any reason that God's impressed upon you that you come. Then you come for that reason. Will you do that? While she plays a couple of stanzas. Would you obey the Lord?
You need to come forward. You obey the Lord. I'll preach the word. I've told you where the bread is. If you don't have the bread, you can get it. Where's the bread? It's in Christ. Do you have it today?